Hi, this is Kevin from Mathsaurus, and in this video we're going to look at questions 21 to 25 of the Intermediate Maths Challenge from 2022. But I actually don't think you should watch this video because I've put all of these questions and more into a free online course called Get Ready for the Intermediate Maths Challenge. In that course, you can work through all of these problems, you can uh, check the answer, you can watch the video solution, but as well as the video solution, there's also a short video hint before each question that will really help you get into the problem and give you the best chance of solving it for yourself. So I'll put a link to that course in the description below. You can go over there and sign up now, totally free, and there are no ads or distractions like there are on YouTube either. So I do really think that's the best way to prepare for the Intermediate Maths Challenge, but of course if you'd rather watch the uh, solutions here on YouTube, you're also uh, very well welcome. Do like the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, it really helps me get this content out there. Otherwise, we will uh, get on with the questions now. So we're looking for this shaded area here, which is the difference between the area of the large semicircle and the smaller semicircle. So for the larger semicircle, uh, we can see that we've got a radius here, which is half of the diameter, which is 2. Now, the area of a circle is pi r squared. So for a semicircle, that's a half pi r squared. So for the large uh, semicircle, that's a half times pi times 2 squared or times 4. So that gives us an area of 2 pi. So the tricky bit here is working out the area of the and the white semicircle here. And to do that, we're going to add in uh, this triangle. And we'll apply Pythagoras theorem to it, right? And this is a very important triangle here because we know the radius of the large semicircle is 2. And this is also a radius of the large semicircle. So that length is 2. And that's really our link between the large semicircle and the small semicircle. So if I take this to be r, the radius of the uh, smaller semicircle, then we've got r squared plus r squared is equal to 2 squared, or 4 by Pythagoras theorem. So I've got 2r squared uh, equals 4, and so r squared equals 2. You could go on to write r equals the square root of 2 if you want to, uh, but in fact, to work out the area of the smaller semicircle, we just need to do a half times pi times r squared. So I just need r squared, really. So 2 times a half here. Uh, gives us 1, and so that is pi, and so uh, the area of the uh, shaded uh, part is just 2 pi minus pi, which is pi, and we want the fraction of the larger semicircle that's shaded, so that's pi out of 2 pi, which is uh, 1 half, and so the answer here is b 1 half. This is quite a nice little question. We've got this rectangle that's got uh, smaller rectangles inside it, uh, the perimeters of the smallest and the largest rectangles are 28 and 12, right? So uh, so this uh, is 28, all around those, adding those four uh, sides together. But actually, another way of writing, drawing those on would be to say, what if I made it uh, this side plus this side, right? And then uh, this side plus this side, right? That's still the same four uh, sides for that rectangle. And in the same way, I can add on 1, 2, 3, 4 for the smaller rectangle, they add together to give 12, but I could, instead of labeling those two, label these two. So you see, actually, the total of the areas, uh, sorry, the perimeters of the two rectangles here, 28 plus 12, is also the perimeter of the large rectangle, which is 40. So the larger rectangle has 40 uh, centimeters as its perimeter and it's got integer side lengths. So if we think about the possible areas we can get here, if you have uh, a problem like this where you've got a fixed perimeter and you're trying to maximize the area, the way to get the biggest possible area is to make it uh, as circular as possible basically when you've got a shape like this. Now we can't actually make it a circle here but the closest we can do in a sense is a square. So the largest area we'll be able to get here is if we make all four of the sides uh, 10 centimeters each. So it'll be a 10 by 10 uh, re rectangle, and that would give us an area of 100. Uh, now, uh, so, you know, the perimeter being 40 means the half perimeter is 20. So basically, you know, if I think about this as a times b, you know, a plus b in this problem it must equal 20. So uh, the next one I could try would be uh, 11 by 9, uh, and I could make an 11 by 9 rectangle, and I still have a perimeter of 40, and that would give me 99. Um, I could do 12 by 8, and you see sort of the less circular or the less square here we're getting, the smaller the areas are. 12 times 8 is 96, and then we get that that is a possible answer to this problem. And if I kept going, um, 13 times 7 is 91, 
uh, we could go to 14 times 6 if we want, which is 84, and then anything else is going to be smaller than that. So we can see for sure that these other ones aren't possible as well. But of course, for the purpose of the math challenge, all you really need to do is find one that does work. And however you find that, whether it's by trial and error or by this method, um, it's fine. Um, but either way, the answer is D96. So here we've got a regular hexagon with side length 2, and we want to work out this area of overlap of the two squares. Now, Oh, I've just got a bigger version of the picture here. Uh, so a good starting point here is to work out the exterior angle for the uh, hexagon, or perhaps you already know it. To get the exterior angle, we do 360 uh, over 6, which is 60 degrees. Uh, and that means the interior angle is 180 minus that, or 120 degrees. Uh, actually, I'll just write that on the other side here. Uh, and by the symmetry, then, that means that if I do sort of uh, half of this uh, triangle split into two smaller triangles. I'm going to get a right angle triangle here, and I'm going to have 60 degrees here, and that means this one is 30 degrees. Uh, we also know that the hexagon has a side length of uh, 2 here. And um, all of these topics, by the way, this is a good question where uh, many of the topics from Go for Golden math challenges come into play here with uh, dealing with um, angles and triangles and polygons and things. Um, but this is really a nice question as well because it uses this triangle that you can really get to know. It's one that's useful to know for GCSE um, and also just very important for maths in general and uh, A level and certainly for maths challenges. So it's this 30, uh, this 30 degree, 60 degree triangle you see is half of uh, an equilateral uh, triangle. Right, so if I make this length two, this length two, and then these two would be one, right? Without actually needing to do anything to do with sine, cos, and tan here. Uh, right, you can, we do use this triangle to work out sine, cos, and tan of 30 and 60 degrees, etc. To if that means something to you. But the point here is that we know by Pythagoras theorem that this height, right, uh, satisfies one squared plus h squared is two squared, or one plus h equals four. Sorry, h squared equals four. So h here, h squared is three, and h is the square root of three. So once I know that that's the square root of three, uh, this distance is the height here, which is the square root of three. Okay, so that means this rectangle in the middle here, uh, base times height is two times two root three, because clearly I've got another, uh, you know, another root three here as well. And if I instead counted these squares, right, I've got one square here which is two by two, and I've got another square here which is two by two. So they've each got area four. If I add those together, I get four plus four, uh, which is eight. So the shaded area here, you see, is just going to be, if I if I um, do those two. Uh, as uh, squares, I count the overall rectangle and I count this middle area twice. So if I take the area of the rectangle away from the area of the two squares, I'll get the shaded area. And so that's 8 minus 2 lots of 2 root 3, so 8 minus 4 root 3. And so the answer here is E. So helpfully, these pies have names that start with A, B, C, and D. So we'll call A an apple pie, B a blueberry pie, C a cherry pie, and D a damson pie. And I'll just start trying to write things down algebraically and see where it gets us. So a cherry pie is the same cost as two apple pies, so let's write C equals 2A. A blueberry pie is the same as two damson pies, so B equals 2D. A cherry pie and two uh, damson pies cost the same as an apple pie and two uh, blueberry pies. So uh, given we've got this, uh, let's substitute these first two into here. Uh, so C is 2A and then b is uh, 2d, so I've got 2a plus b equals a plus 2b. And then if I subtract a and subtract b from each side, we get that a must equal b. Now, once we know that, we actually know the ratio of all of the different pi. So I've got a is the same as b, and then uh, b is two lots of d, so d is a half, uh, d is a half of a and b, and uh, c is two lots of uh, a and b. Now, all of the pies have to be an integer number of pounds here, so it makes sense to write everything in terms of the smallest one. So that would be D here. So I've got uh, A is going to be equal to two lots of D, B is also two lots of D, and C is two lots of A, uh, which is 4D, and then of course I've just got um, D is D. Uh, and so if we get one of each type of pi, uh, then we're looking for A plus B plus C plus D, well that'll be uh, d plus 2d plus 2d plus 4d, that gives us 9d. So because d is an integer, the answer here must be a multiple of 9, and uh, the only multiple of 9 out of the options here is uh, b, 
at 18 pounds and so that must be the answer there might be uh, other possible answers to this question if i had different options you know 27 uh, any other multiple of nine could be a possibility here so this is one of those questions where uh, it's not one that we could answer without the multiple choice options all we get is that it's a multiple of nine and then we choose the one out of the uh, answers uh, the only one it can be here right question 25 always a tricky one and we've got uh, a garden patio that's being planned by making uh, identical square paving stones into a rectangle that's x by y stones so i'm going to start by immediately drawing uh, a picture of that so let's just say it's uh, x in this direction and y in this direction um, and then she finds when she adds a border of width one stone right so let's just uh, draw a border of width one stone because i don't know the scale here so i don't know how big one should be but it's just a diagram and uh, then uh, the area of the border is equal to the area of the patio so what would the area of this border be well if i split it uh, off uh, like this right the width of the patio is one everywhere so like this uh, length here is y so this is y by one so this area is y right this one is x so this area is x this area is x and this area is y and these four corners are all equal to one so the area of the border okay is uh, 2x plus 2y plus 4 and the area of the patio is just uh, x times y of course so we need x times y to be equal to 2x plus 2y plus 4 and where you go from here is probably the trickiest part of this question um, because we've got a quadratic form uh, sort of expression here not, a, not an actual quadratic in the sense it's not x squared or y squared we've got x times y and we've got x and y and a number so it is a what we call a quadratic form because it's got these two things multiplied together so if i subtract 2x and 2y and 4 right just like i would do if it was a quadratic equation now rather than where well, i've got x squared if it was x squared and x and something i would you know be looking to do it as x and x but here i've got uh, x and y so i'm going to try and factorize it as uh x uh minus something times y minus something now because it's 2x and 2y it's going to have to be minus 2 uh, and minus 2 that'll give us minus 2y and minus 2x when i multiply this out and it'll give me x times y but if i multiply this out as it is right i'll get xy minus 2x minus 2y plus 4 and i actually want minus 4 so i'm going to have to subtract 8 here to make this uh, the same as this have a look at that carefully and make sure you understand that's a bit like the sort of logic we do when we do uh, completing the square uh, if you've covered that um, not a topic needed for the uh, imc though uh, right so uh, if we just move the uh, eight to the other side now so again a bit different to a, a quadratic here because uh, we you know we're not putting it equal to zero factorizing and solving like that we're putting the eight back onto the right hand side and we're now using the fact that uh, x and y are whole numbers right because uh, it's x stones and y stones so i've got two numbers that multiply together to give eight and uh, that's the uh, values of x minus two and y minus two here right so i could perhaps start making a little table x minus two and y minus two right so it could be uh, eight times one right it could also be one times eight um it could be four times two or it could be two times four right and uh, then we can just check that that gives us sensible values for x and y here so if i uh, add two to each of these i'd get x is 10 and y is 3 uh, x is 3 and y is 10 x is 6 and y is 4 uh, x minus 2 is 4 and y is 6 and we can see we get four different possible values of x here all that do make sense in the context of the question now there's a slight subtlety here and perhaps uh, I'm not sure if this makes it a good question or a bad question, but ignoring the subtlety, actually, you don't miss you don't miss anything here. But we should consider it because we could have negative values for this product, right? It could also be uh, minus one times minus eight. It could be minus eight times minus one. It could be minus two times minus four, and it could be minus four times minus two. Um, but actually, none of these give us sensible values for x and y, right? If I add two here, I get one and minus six, and I can't have minus six, um, or I get minus six and one and otherwise i get zero and minus two or um uh, minus two and zero here and again none of those give uh, sensible values for x and y so only uh the ones above the line here uh, are useful to us 
and the answer is that there are four different values uh, of x, these ones here, 10, 3, 6 and 4, and so the answer is C. Very well done if you got that right. So I really hope that was useful. Don't forget, I think the best way to prepare for the Intermediate Maths Challenge is to click below and take my totally free online course, Get Ready for the Intermediate Maths Challenge, where you can work through all of these problems and more, not just with the solutions, but also with video hints to help you get started. So do check that out if you haven't already and share it with your friends. Please do like this video and subscribe to the channel as well. It really helps me get the content out there and I will see you soon.